we're going to move now to talking about Down syndrome, the most common genetic cause of intellectual disabilities. I love this picture. No one can predict this amount of awesome. You've learned about several characteristics of Down syndrome through your readings, but I wanted to share more deeply about cognitive development across the lifespan. Studies have begun to replicate a connection between early motor development and executive functioning skills in those with Down syndrome. Executive functioning refers to the mental processes that enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks successfully through our working and short-term memory abilities. So this is another reason why physical and occupational therapy should begin as soon as possible. Those with Down syndrome also tend to struggle with spatial memory, which is memory for planning a route to a desired location and to remember where an object is located or where an event occurred. It's like finding your car at the end of the day. Finding one's way around an environment and remembering where things are within are really crucial for everyday processes. And it impacts your adaptive functional skills and one's vulnerability in that regard. Those with Down syndrome tend to do more poorly with reversal learning, which is an adaptive behavior in which a learned response has to be extinguished and replaced by an alternate response. This ability is actually associated with impulse control and just overall cognitive flexibility. Another interesting finding is that there does seem to be premature aging across six body systems, including the skin, endocrine system, and early menopause in women, sensory system, the musculoskeletal system, and immunological system. But in contrast, hypertension, atherosclerosis, and adult onset solid cancers are uncommonly found. Unfortunately, those with Down syndrome do have a higher rate of dementia and especially Alzheimer's disease. The myth that all with Down syndrome get Alzheimer's is untrue. However, a significant percentage, between about 50 to 70 percent, do develop dementia symptoms beginning at age 50. It's typically less than 4% at age 50 and rises to 67% by age 72. What's interesting about this graph is that raw hippocampal levels are actually higher for those with Down syndrome with dementia, Down syndrome without dementia, than healthy controls, or those with Alzheimer's disease but do not have Down syndrome. The hippocampus is involved in memory uh, functioning. Functional declines were first noted in skills that were more complex, and then it progressed to more basic and fundamental abilities, which mirror typical sequencing in adults with Alzheimer's disease in the population. Although stereotyped as always being sunny and positive, those with Down syndrome also experience depression and other mood disorders. Clinicians have to watch for that. There's also a small 7% that are comorbid with autism spectrum disorder. They also exhibit low blood pressure, which has been linked to Alzheimer's as well. But more importantly, what are the educational implications for those with Down syndrome? There's a wide range of abilities with those with Down syndrome, but the majority in the, are in the mild to moderate intellectual range and are very capable. They may just take more time to learn, to sit, to walk and talk and thrive in an integrated social setting at home and at school. Those with Down syndrome tend to be highly socially responsive to the environment and to people, but they can also exhibit aggressive behaviors and other challenging behaviors. Nichols et al. examined maternal sensitivity of 53 mothers of children with Down syndrome using home observations when the children were two, three, and five years old, and looked at the relations with maternal reports and the observations of over-aggression at school at age five. Maternal sensitivity at ages two and three years did not significantly predict child aggression at age five, but low maternal sensitivity at age five was significantly related to over-aggression at both home and school. The Maternal Behavior Q-Sort, or the MBQS, measured maternal sensitivity with trained raters that were blind to the aggression scores of the children. The MBQS measured whether a mother read the child's cues and responded promptly and appropriately to these signals. Sensitivity is an important variable that, to help stop the development of aggressive behaviors. Maternal insensitivity has been shown in other studies to lead to stress in infants, leading to increased physiological arousal. Borisnikov and Lejeune examined social knowledge and social reasoning in a neurotypical Swiss population and in children with Down syndrome. The social reasoning task asked children whether the following situations were correct or incorrect and why it was correct or incorrect. Their answers were rated as either irrelevant, 
they didn't answer the question or provided an inappropriate response, or factual where they described the scene without social awareness. They also could be rated as intersubjective where their answer was based on the causality of relationships with social awareness. The boy will be embarrassed because she laughed. Answers are rated as conceptual if their answer is based on conceptual knowledge of conventional or moral rules. The results showed that young children ages four to six were well able to distinguish between appropriate and inappropriate social behavior, but they had significantly more difficulties in judging and identifying social cues for the transgression of conventional rules than for moral ones. Between ages four and eight, their social reasoning was mainly based on factual answers, where older children showed significantly more social awareness, making more reference to emotional and social consequences for the victims. The representation of a more universal applicability of social rules seemed to develop later in child as of age eight. In contrast, participants with Down syndrome exhibited significantly more difficulties in judging, identifying, and reasoning about transgression of social rules without social awareness. The graph represents what types of responses were given by the neurotypical population and those with Down syndrome. Those with Down syndrome were much more likely not to recognize the causal social relationships and effects and the implications of the situation. In light of understanding more about the cognitive abilities of those with Down syndrome, I want to highlight a few tips on working with those with Down syndrome, which are good for all students. You can refer to the Moodle handout of these tips from the National Down Syndrome Association. Those with Down syndrome tend to do much better in small groups and do better one-on-one -on -one at times. If you model the task and give many opportunities to perform it, they can learn to master the task. Repetition is helpful. Also break down the tasks into smaller sequence steps to reduce their working memory and short-term memory loads. One can ask the student to rephrase instructions and allow for adequate response time as they take more time to process the question and respond. Provide consistent positive reinforcement and feedback immediately after the student produces a correct response. If the student makes a mistake, do not say that's wrong ask the student to try again or provide the correct response and require the student to repeat the correct response immediately. Immediate corrective feedback is more effective than delayed. Give clear signals about the end of one activity and the beginning of the next. And finally, use concrete objects and manipulatives along with verbal explanations as they may struggle with more abstract ideas or procedures.